Hi everybody, it's Mary Satoli with the Follow Your Bliss Foundation. Today I want to talk a little bit about battling your fears and demons with uh, benzodiazepine withdrawal. Um, part of the reason I chose this subject is I've been um, spending some time working with a woman this week that is uh, was not on them for very long. It's like six months, something like that. So it doesn't matter. It doesn't seem to matter how long you're on it. It just seems like some people just have a really hard, hard, hard time with this. And she is really struggling with her fears. And she's asked me, you know, if she can die from this. And I said, you know, typically if you taper slow, uh, you should be fine. But I understand where she's coming from. And the, the subject of fear seems to come up a lot with the benzo thing. I think I've read a number of posts and I've read other people's stuff. And it seems like that the fear of death and the fear of dying uh, seems to be a pretty common thing from these benzos. I think part of it is that it unplugs you from the activity of day-to-day -day life because you're so isolated and if it's very frightening uh, I had a lot of this kind of thinking um, before probably I would say probably up until just maybe a couple months ago I was still getting quite a bit of these thoughts and just uh, feeling like especially at night I think that's probably typical because you're alone well you're alone all the time anyway I mean it's like but it's dark and just nighttime seems a lot harder anyway sometimes and when you don't have that rhythm of life going because I was thinking today I had had uh, to run out and get some uh, goat's milk from a lady that uh, has goats here locally and I remember there was a time not very long ago in fact just several months ago that that uh, I couldn't count on my energy or my you know my mind being normal to be able to just drop everything that I was doing and go out to run errands or, or run to wherever you know just and when I went out to just do that this afternoon because a lot of times I would try to get up in the morning and, and go out and do whatever I had to do in the morning when I still had enough stamina and I would just come home and I would be done for the day and a lot of days I think I've mentioned I didn't even get out of the house but that time from probably noon till bedtime is you know when I would spend time just trying to occupy myself with YouTube videos with music with yoga with meditation whatever I could do to distract myself from these horrible uh, feelings you get and I don't understand really the the dynamics enough about the drug how it actually creates so much doom and gloom in your brain it's just it's it's frightening and so I was trying to find some way to reassure her because she's really afraid she's going to have a seizure she asked me if I had any and I told her no but I did have blackouts and that was pretty scary because um, I had pretty bad injuries you know um, head trauma concussions uh, first one was a fracture to my left orbit and uh, you know it just seems so surreal when you you wake up from these blackouts and you're looking around and <laughs> one of them I had at a, at a grocery store and I remember the clerks were standing around me when I came to and I had this feeling or this delusionment of being on another planet or just not knowing where I was I was really disoriented for about a couple minutes after I came to and they were all you know running around calling paramedics and what I, I was fine but I had sprained my back really bad from hitting a concrete floor but um, I think um, that some of it is just that you're you're so your life just seems so out of control because you can't function the way that you were able to prior to taking these drugs or you you know trying to come off of them um, and so you're, you're, I think that loss of control in our life is really a freaky thing because we live in a society where we'll go, go, go. And I, and I think that gives us some 
distraction or or delusion that we're we're in more control than we actually are and I think that's what this whole thing did for me is it was really a wake-up call to realize that uh, I'm human I'm really human and <laughs> that means sometimes that I mean most of the time the only thing we have control over is what we do with certain circumstances so that's why I wanted to talk about this a little bit today because I was hoping that uh, some of you could leave your comments below as far as what you struggled with the most coming off benzos or if you're currently tapering what your biggest challenge is right now because I'm kind of curious how many other people had these kinds of feelings because it seems to me pretty common it seems to be a pretty common uh, element so I wanted to share a few things that that I did that helped me and I think you probably all know that I got big into meditation but the biggest thing for me was deep breathing which goes along with yoga and goes along with all the meditation stuff because uh, the deep breathing somehow does I think they've done scientific studies about yoga how it raises GABA levels in the brain and I really th truly think that even outside of diet supplements everything else deep breathing and yoga helped me the most I would put on typically something on YouTube and, and I just looked everywhere for anything positive that I could listen to that would take me out of that negative spin that I was in of oh my god I'm gonna die and and I know that all of you know these feelings it's this fe feeling that you aren't going to survive this and, and if you do you're going to be challenged in ways that that uh, I don't know so sometimes you have a hard time believing the people that are talking to you like me that are off of them now I mean I I'm where some of you guys are at with the withdrawal I was where you were at you know 15 months ago in fact today is my 15 month anniversary off benzos yay today the 21st of April and uh, I was when I was doing my drive today I was thinking wow this is this is really cool this is like spring and things are going well for the first time in a really really long time and I just had these thoughts about this poor woman um, I've thought many times how grateful I am to be where I'm at and not back in the throes of withdrawal like so many of you and I'm really trying to help her with uh, with uh, coping with the challenges she's she's got to, to travel on Monday and she's terrified because she's afraid she's gonna have a, a panic attack on the plane and I know those feelings because a lot of times I well most of the time I never went anywhere because I was afraid I was gonna embarrass myself in public because I already had so many things like the blackouts and things that I couldn't control and I think what it did is it did it took me from a place of feeling like I had to micromanage everything in my life to sort of just going more with the flow and allowing myself to I was like when I had that blackout at the grocery store <laughs> they did my pulse and everything was fine my blood I wish I knew it would be because it just always is and you know they never find anything wrong with you and you feel like a hypochondriac and, but you can't help it I mean the stuff is happening and and there's no well there is a reason for it but there doesn't seem to be any medical explanation from their standpoint why you're calling the paramedics or why you're in the ER or why you're wherever you're at at the moment and just it's frustrating because she was going to go have some tests and and I told her I says maybe you should just hold off because I said sometimes at least for me I think it was more stressful going to a doctor or going to the ER and having tests done and then finding nothing and then you're sitting there and feeling like an idiot realizing it's probably the benzos but there's always this fine challenge about where do I uh, where do I draw the line with getting help you know and, and that's one of the frightening things about this drug is you just you don't know how to separate those things and I think we've talked about this in other videos of you know that I've mentioned uh, that when to seek help problem because I waited too long when I had pneumonia in January and ended up spending three days in the hospital because I didn't go to a doctor because I was just fed up 
and it's challenging. So um, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about our demons. I, I, I think that many of us who have medicated uh, from anxiety or depression have suppressed uh, childhood things, relationship issues. Um, I know I had a lot with my mother and my sister when I came off of this stuff and all of a sudden the stuff started surfacing again and I guess that that uh, my doctor had mentioned because he went through this he said that you will have these emotions and feelings that have been suppressed from the drug for a really long time and all of a sudden you'll be with them and you'll have to learn to be with them in a different way and I had a very good I think I mentioned her in one of my earlier videos um, Carol Hansen Gray and I think I have a link but she was really helpful to me in helping me process this from a spiritual standpoint and looking at it as an opportunity to look at the people that we've had challenges with from the standpoint that what was the gift they gave us what was the the gift that they taught us and with my sister it was learning how to set boundaries and learning how to have healthy relationships instead of uh, continually running back to a relationship that wasn't healthy for me in a lot of ways and I did that with other people it wasn't just my sister I realized how codependent I was and I had done this with uh, men and I had done this with uh, a nonprofit that I had just you know rescuing people and not knowing where to draw the line with where I needed to take care of me and I think this is this is a problem that we have in general in our society because we're taught that if we're taking care of ourselves we're being selfish and we're not uh, we're not doing things as much as we should be for other people and I know that I got the message when I was a kid that I was selfish and I think that uh, that had a big impact on me. I got a lot of negative messages, which a lot most of us do. And I think that's why we end up with all these emotional traumas and wounds and then we turn into really wounded adults and we have children that we end up wounding really bad, which I'm glad I didn't. I don't have any kids, but I I think I knew early on that I was not going to be a very present mother because of the type of business that I'm in and it made me feel kind of sometimes that I was being selfish, but in a way, uh, music takes a lot of hours and persistence and uh, time to get good at. And I felt that that would be a big imposition of my time. I was always just a real career-driven person. And uh, I think we have all this pressure that we have to have this house and car and family, and especially my generation of women because I think that that our mothers particularly my mother I know um, came from a generation where they did what their husband said they had kids they just weren't from a generation of women that had a lot of independence uh, they were very codependent my mother was very codependent and very uh, guarded about her um, her she just wasn't a really emotionally present person. She kept everything to herself because that was the the dutiful thing to do, being uh, quiet, not talking about your pain. We're not supposed to be human and I think that's the, the thing that drives me the most crazy about this society is that you know we, we pop a pill so that we're not depressed because we're not supposed to feel depressed. We're not supposed to have sadness. We're not supposed to feel uh, anxiety or all these emotions and I think we've suppressed and we've suppressed and we've suppressed and then we start having to medicate just to um, keep that down even more and then everything starts bubbling to the surface and it becomes this big toxic uh, conglomerate that's not we're looking at a real tough world here right now I mean there's a lot of people on these drugs I mean and when I grew up I never went to the doctor. I never took anything. I don't even remember taking antibiotics when I was a kid. And I think I went to the doctor maybe twice. I, I don't even, you know, I don't even remember one when I was a teenager and I had allergies and they thought I had a cold all winter and it turned out to be allergies. And 
I took an allergy medication for the rest of the spring, but that was it. And then I had some trouble with it as an adult, but I just didn't give it a lot of attention. And that's the thing with this whole medical campaign. It's almost as though it's all fear-based, and if you don't go to the doctor, you might die, and you might ha get this, and you might get that. And that's how the whole focus has really uh, been a, a very effective marketing campaign. I have to credit them with that because they have banked on uh, people's fear of death and dying. That's the business they're in, and this pill will keep you from they don't come out and say keep you from dying but you know it's like they, they might as well because it's like that's kind of where they're they're gauging their their message it just seems like it's so convoluted on a, in a just a kind of warped way and 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 then what do people do with their 90 percent of their pastime they sit and watch tv and they're getting all those messages uh, you know those ask your doctor commercials that come out and it's just very fear-based, and I think that back to the the fear issues with the benzos is that that when you're coming off of them, that that suppressed fear that you haven't dealt with over the years is starting to come up, and you haven't felt this stuff in a really long time because you've been medicating and keeping it down. I know I recognized a lot of it when I started feeling those things again, because I'm like, God, you know, I mean. I don't really want to deal with this and, and it, it's not an easy thing to do but I spent a lot of time with this counselor the spiritual counselor and she helped me find a way to give that um, negative thought uh, to transform it uh, to take it and give it to the universe God whoever uh, you use as your spiritual guide or support whether you pray or whether you meditate or whatever you do to to ground yourself with that spiritual thing I know that if I hadn't dug as deeply as I did into getting to the root of a lot of my unresolved issues that I I don't know that I would I would be dealing with things as well as I am now without any drugs uh, it's nice to not have that fear with me all the time anymore and I think what it does for you is it makes you a much more grateful person um, I know that that you know it sounds silly but simple things like last night I slept so good and hard and deep and it was like I woke up a couple times to go to the bathroom and then I remember going back to bed and I was so tired I mean I just kept falling back to sleep because usually I'll wake up and I'm like ready to go and and I kept like dozing off for another half hour and it was finally I think seven o'clock I'm usually up at five thirty six at the latest you know and I actually slept till seven o'clock and then I laid there for a while and I just kind of enjoyed that that morning feeling that that I you know haven't had in such a long time because you you lose so much sleep and and there's these moments of just peace where I wake up have that that stillness and that peace in my little guest house here and I I think how good it felt to sleep and how much I appreciate just something that simple but that's what benzo withdrawal does for you it it makes you really grateful of all the simple things in life like I'm I think I mentioned this in one of my blogs we have fruit trees out back it's it's amazing I feel like I'm in Eden here it's great I have a tangelo, tangelo orange lemon grapefruit and the apricots are coming in right now so I, every week I go and I measure them because my mom has this really great recipe that she used to make when I was a kid it was my favorite dessert it's called apricot wafer pie and it's Mm. <laughs> it has this will be great for you guys who are like in, in just finished tapering when you're having all the carb you know cravings and all that stuff because <laughs> I'm gonna make it in a couple weeks for my my landlord and his girlfriend and um, a massage therapist I do a trade with him for food <laughs> and he appreciates it because I'm, I'm a good cook and so you put a layer of chocolate wafer and then you have um, 
an apricot stuff that you, it's like a mashed apricot with egg and honey and uh, lemon and uh, I, I think I'm going to put maybe some nuts in and I'm not sure yet because I always modify a lot of recipes I find online. And then you put whipping cream, fresh whipping cream, and then another layer of chocolate, another layer of apricots, and then more whipped cream, and then some chocolate on top. And it's really good. So um, I am going to be making that, and I've been checking on the apricots every few days because they come in pretty quick, and they're already starting to ripen just a little bit and get some color in them, but they're, they're still about only about but only about this big right now they're not very big but um, so I just it's just interesting how I, I never appreciated those small things um, walking home from the pool there's an orange tree that I pick uh, fresh oranges off of and I'm able to squeeze that into some salad dressings and stuff that I make and I and while I'm throwing this food thing out of you <laughs> I don't know how many of you like to cook or are interested in recipes, but I can do a video on on some healthy recipes and show you how to make them. I don't know how many of you would be interested in that, but if you are, let me know because I'm open to doing fun stuff because I don't think benzodiazepine withdrawal, at least most of the videos I've watched, are not very fun or entertaining. They're very scary, and that's another reason why I wanted to cover this subject because um, what, what I found was is what you focus on the mind is very powerful what you focus on grows and the more I focused on positive things while I was recovering like cooking good food and just enjoying that and enjoying the moment and playing my piano again and creating little things with my music and just focusing on that it just over the last six months I'm, I've got a, you know, three new songs that are coming out, a new CD which we'll be releasing over the next year. I have a video that I've created and three screenplays that I've, they're not all done, but I've finished with one and then I, the other two are still in development. But I've got all this amazing work that I just took my mind, my frazzled, benzoed out, scared to death brain, and I slowly listened to inspirational stuff that helped ground me. And even in the worst moment, if I just did five, 10 minutes of deep breathing to get over that, like this morning after I got going, even, even now I had a little bit of anxiety, just mild, you know, nothing big deal, but it was just sort of, I had this like feeling in my gut that just was like, I don't like, I don't like how this feels. <laughs> That's part of it. You got to feel all this stuff again. We're not used to feeling anything. We're kind of a, a you know, suppressed society in that sense. So, I I just remember feeling like I don't, you know, I don't want to experience this. And just for that moment, I thought, okay, you're not gonna go there and like expand that feeling. And instead, I got myself up and I went down to the pool and I just worked it off. And that was how I dealt. I mean. I fortunately was able to, to exercise quite a bit, not toward the end of my taper. There was about four months that I, I couldn't do much except for go for walks, but that does help. I know a lot of people that said they just walked and walked and walked, and sometimes just wearing yourself out and just barreling through that fear and anxiety was a good way for me to uh, shake that anxiety that I was having. Some days I would have such horrific anxiety that I felt like I was going to die. You, I know everyone knows this, but you have that feeling, and I would just go down to the school, and I would, like 20 minutes, just nonstop laps, just, you know, go for it, <clears throat> and it did help. I'd get out, and I'd feel a little bit better. I'd get a little endorphin burst, so try to uh, cope with your fear by just occupying. I know one of the things I mentioned to her was is that I got online, and I found every sweepstake I could find. It didn't matter if I was going to win anything or not, although I was optimistic. I still still do them from time to time when I have time, but I just to occupy like an hour or an hour and a half of my time because as you know, the clock ticks really, really, really slow <laughs> when you're recovering. 
And until you're like, it's amazing how like the last few months I've noticed that my day just zips by because I'm so busy now and, and I had forgotten what it's like and I had taken that for granted until I couldn't do it. So gratitude is one huge way to get yourself into a better frame of mind. Just everything that I can think of that I, it, morning and night, before I go to bed, when I wake up in the morning, I get up and I think how grateful I am to have amazing friends and to have this organization to be able to do something positive with what I'm doing and helping other people and to be back to my music and to have this little guest house. I have everything I need. We all usually have everything we need unless you're really, really poverty stricken in this country. So uh, gratitude is a, is a huge one and it's something that I took a lot of things for granted. I, I really did and I'm I'm especially grateful for a good night's sleep like this morning. So uh, if you guys have anything you want to share, any questions or comments, please do. Uh, again, let me know what other things you'd like to hear or have me talk about. I'm happy to, um, so to do some, I've got all kinds of, like I said, vegetarian restaurant, uh, restaurants, recipes. <laughs> My dad had a restaurant, so I'm thinking of restaurants on the brain. Um, I also have some great uh, sauces for chicken and fish and things like that, like ginger sauces, which are really good for the inflammation you have with this. Uh, you know, good healthy stuff. Um, and I'm happy to share those recipes. And I may not be cooking them live when I do this, but uh, we can certainly do that if you guys, and there's any of you out there that are trying to change your diet to get healthy and stuff again, because that's another important factor and I think that's why I got, got so into it is I've always been a pretty healthy eater but uh, I think I got more cognizant about how much of certain things that I was putting in my body because I was so depleted I mean seriously depleted at uh, the end of the taper it was I was really drawn I mean skinny and um, really seriously <laughs> sick so um, what I'm going to do today is I've got a kind of a special treat. I am going to play one of my mu my music videos at the. And it's not the new one. That's still on its way. <laughs> May first. I'm still. I promise. May first. But uh, it's kind of to go along with the theme today. The song is called Phantoms, and it's something that I did a while back. It was written with my band in Seattle uh, called Flipside and co-written by a keyboard player by the name of Ron McIntyre, who is an excellent musician and friend. And we wrote a lot of really good stuff together. So this got recorded and it turned out to be a pretty big hit. And I did this video kind of on my own to just, uh, to just share online. And it's, it, the reason I called it Phantoms was because the band at the time that I was with, almost everybody in the band was recovering from alcohol addiction, drug addiction, and going through kind of similar with this demon stuff and this fear of death and all the stuff that I've been talking about today. So I thought it was a good theme to follow up on here. And this guitar player that w did music on this particular song is incredibly talented. He kind of just took the spotlight on this piece. It was really pretty fun to do. And so the message is, is that, you know, in that darkness, in that time where we're just trying to cope with those, those demons and negative feelings and anxiety and fear, that there is a light that uh, shines in the night. And if you stay with this long enough and you go within and find the, the other side, the the light, spirit, source, whatever you want to call that, there is a reason that everything happens to us. And I believe that most of the people that are going through these benzo things are going through like a huge, huge spiritual transition. Uh, I think we're going to see a big shift with this whole thing, I hope. I hope that there's going to be kind of an awakening about this whole healthcare system and how we need to take ownership of our issues and our health because it's running us in a big way. I think I've mentioned in my blogs how much this is costing the taxpayer about $50 billion in incarcerations, 
from the drug and Medicare and disability costs. And if you look at the figures and you break it down, and I've got this in one of my blogs, I think it's called um, Drugs or Disability. And uh, about a third of the money that goes into Medicare and disability goes to Big Pharma. That's how much they're making off of this. And we're paying for it. The taxpayers are paying for it. So. And, and we do not have a healthy society. People are sick. Everybody that I've talked to knows somebody that's on at least one of these drugs. Uh, I just talked to a friend yesterday whose son committed suicide. He was on antidepressants and a number of other psychiatric medications. They're not even sure what he was on. He just flipped out and took off with the pills and ran out of the house and he took the whole bottle and he killed himself. And there, I believe that there are more suicide-related deaths from these drugs than they're letting on. It's just re not reported. They, it's like she was even telling me that they never really verified anything. And I think it's just because they don't want people to know. And that's why we all feel so betrayed, because we were given this stuff without any information. And we're supposed to just be these compliant, nice little patients. Not anymore. Not me. I don't know about you guys, but not me. And not ask questions when it's our body. It's our health. We have a right to know. And that's one of the things that I'm working on, pushing education to get people to know and to take accountability. We're really spending a lot of time and effort in this project. and. It's pretty much my passion these days. I, I see what these people are going through and it, it makes me, like I said, so grateful I'm not going through it anymore and that I'm done with that. I mean, I still have some symptoms, but for the most part, I feel like they're gonna just completely resolve themselves in probably a matter of months uh, based on the information <coughs> that I've had, excuse me. It's so dry here today. I mean, our, our humidity is probably, if it's 7%, 8% today, my throat is so dry. It's like 90 degrees in here right now, but I like it hot. <laughs> People come in here like, holy God, it's hot in here. But I just have a fan going, and I don't like the air, the cold air blowing on me. So, But you have to have it here in the summer. You, you, you do, because it's so humid in July and August. We get monsoon, and it's just brutal, like brutal. So you guys... Uh, that's about all I have today and I again I'm going to leave you with phantoms and please go to our patreon account and you know, get a membership help support our cause because all of this stuff is affecting every single one of us even if we haven't been on the drug ourselves we probably know somebody that is and you need to pass this information on to them and help them get clear and help raise everybody up because if we don't get conscious and we don't wake up it's just going to get worse and I think that this was a huge awakening for me and I'm hoping that all this stuff is helping you guys too so take care have a good weekend uh this is Mary Satoli saying bye-bye for now take care bye